There is nothing cooler than my son Chance, who's 14 years old, but my buddy here, Lloyd Lewis, thinks that his son's kind of cool too, but mine's cooler. I will arm wrestle you for that. I will I, arm wrestle uh, you. I, or we could have them fight, because my, fights between kids with Down syndrome, you can make money off of that. That's mostly hugging. It, yeah. I, I would like to see if they would actually fight. All right, in the way of introduction, Lloyd Lewis is the guy who runs these terrific ARC stores that you see throughout Colorado, and the ARC... Um, um, uh, donation center, so it is treasure hunting when you go to an ARC store. We Absolutely. Call it thrifting. Absolutely. We have 27 stores. We process 100 million items a year. We have 5 million customers. 100 million items? Over 100 million items. Maybe you can come in one of our stores and help us process. I'll be happy and to. We have 5 million customer transactions annually, and it's, it's really a great organization that funds programs to advocate for our kids. More importantly, well, the thing that you did there that uh, touched me the most is uh, when you got there, you, you have people working there with developmental disabilities, but there really weren't that many. Now, tell me about the people who work at ARC. When I started in 2005, we had 10 employees with disabilities and out of 500 total employees. And as a parent of a kid with Down syndrome, I thought, you know, we really should employ more people with disabilities. So I put in an employment program, um, and we now have over 300 employees with developmental disabilities. And How many? 300? Over 300. Over That's 300. incredible. And they are terrific employees. They love to contribute. Uh, they love to help in any way they can. They rarely miss work. And we name three of our employees with disabilities as Heroes of the Year every year just because of those qualities. And they're a lot of fun to work with. The other part that I think people don't get in a, in a work situation, when you bring in somebody uh, like, one, like our kids or somebody with Down syndrome or so. Uh, it changes the mood of the office as well. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, particularly with people with Down syndrome, that it, it is really hard to have a bad day uh, it, when they're it around. It really helps create a positive atmosphere, positive morale. And if you're working next to someone with Down syndrome and you do what you and I do, complain and gripe and you know, get mad. They look at you thinking, do you understand this is the greatest job in the history of employment? Yeah. Sorting clothes and tagging clothes. And, you know, they just, they just help you feel better about what you're doing. Right, let, let, let's talk about, about your son. You wrote a book about your son, Kennedy. I did. Um, why not them? This, by the way, you can get on Amazon, but also at the ARC stores, I hope. Uh, at the ARC stores, also at Tattered Cover. And uh, we did a book launch uh, a couple of weeks ago. So basically what I see is that you think your son is so much better than my son, he deserves that's the, a book. That's, I'm doing a major motion picture starring my son. That's the main point of the book, is, is to point out his higher qualities versus chance. <laughs> so just so you know. Just so you know. Now the idea behind the book is to help uh, enhance awareness of who our kids are and what they contribute and what they contribute to their communities and to their schools and to places of work and just the idea of having our kids included in the mainstream. I don't know about you. So our, our kids, our sons are about the same age. Mine just turned 14 uh, a few weeks ago. Yours has been 14 for a little bit, uh, which is a, a wild age. I don't know about it for you. Because <laughs> I've always wondered if that teenage rebellion was a kind of a learned characteristic, but I'm finding with my son, who isn't completely verbal yet, uh, no, it, it, being a teenager is hardwired. So. He wants rock and roll music now, and his, <laughs> his word for that is dad, noise. And so whenever, it's like, no, noise, which means turn it up. And he's just doing this, and, and he gets a little bit more, more angry and frustrated with me like a good teenager should. Uh, I don't know if Kennedy does my, the same my, thing. Kennedy is very connected to his iPad, yeah. and if you mess with him when he's on his yeah. iPad, that does not go as well as one would <laughs> hope. And he gets very determined in certain things and just various things that he likes to do, and, and he can have a little, little rebellion, too. I don't know about you. When I found out uh, I was going to have a son with Down syndrome, I did not take it well. Matter of fact, I took it really poorly. It took me several years to wrap my head around this. And I, I, really, thought, um, I really thought my son would have a lesser life. I really thought that he would miss out, that, that he would be a something I would be sympathetic towards. Like, oh my God, he's outside the world. He's not part of the world. He's not happy. He's bullied. He's, you know, he's hurting. Uh, I, I really thought 
uh, it was going to be a bad life for him. It, it, took me a, it took me a while to realize, I want to have his life. He has a spark <laughs> yeah. that I, I can't believe. He is, he's my life coach at this point. <laughs> yeah, um, and he's, he's the fraternity brother I, I never had. If, if you could take uh, Keith Moon from The Who and, and John Belushi, and <laughs> if they had a love child with that kind of destructive power, that's my son. It is a constant party. Did, did you have a similar I did struggle not have, with that? I did not have the reaction or struggle that you had, although that is typical. Uh, for whatever reason, and people would not have predicted this, I just concluded that I was, when I was told he had Down syndrome that he was a great kid, that he would always be a great kid, I would do everything I could to help him and raise him like my other kids, and uh, that he would be a great young man. And that's exactly what's happened. He's brought so much joy to our family. So it, much, it, so that. much. How do, you, how do you explain that to somebody who doesn't quite get it? Because let's, let's face it, I don't know about uh, Kennedy, my son is a lot of work, all right? I'm, I'm, uh, I still have to help him go to the bathroom at 14. I mean, it is, it is a ton of work uh, to have this kind of special needs child, um, but it's, it's a complete joy. How, how, do you, how do you explain that to somebody who might not relate? Uh, I think it's a matter of people just uh, being around our kids and meeting our kids and being aware of who they are and you know, how they relate to their peers and how positive they are. Uh, with Kennedy, in many ways, he's the easiest of the kids I've had. Uh, because he, in, in a lot of ways, is, is always, almost always happy and yeah. joyous and pleasant and loves to give hugs. And, you know, some of my older kids weren't necessarily as, <laughs> as appreciative of me as they became teenagers. But in a lot of ways, Kennedy's been the easiest of my kids. In some ways, Chance has been easier, too, in that... Um you know, he's still six years old in a way, and he still, he just wants to hang with dad. Nobody else wants to hang with dad. <laughs> My son wants to hang with dad. I'm, I'm a hero to one person in the entire universe, and so um, I, I'm, I'm just loving this. I, part that I got wrong is how I think the world is changing to accept kids like Chance and Kennedy, that um, I was using my frame of reference where my son would go to school and be locked up in some windowless room and uh, um, go on the short bus, uh, which he does, and, and then come back and nobody would know him. He has typical friends. He has an exciting life. Uh, uh, people like him. He is, he's part of the community in a way that I never predicted would happen. And I still do think there's a ton of long ways to go for, to get that. And the work you're doing at ARC really helps with that, to have 300 people integrated in the real world, um, but it, it, it's amazing. Kennedy's the same way. He has typical friends. He's in his yearbook club at Cherry Creek High. He goes to the dances. He's popular with the girls, and he, he is very happy. He does not get bullied, does not get made fun of. Uh, his teachers are great with him, and wherever we go in the community, you know, it's Lloyd who. It's, you know, I'm Kennedy's yeah. dad. Kennedy's the star. Yeah. It really is. I'm honored to be part of my son's entourage, and that's all I am. I mean, that's, I'm just... There's hope for you with your son, by the way. Yeah, there's there, there is. He's, he's changed me. All right, tell me, what is it we're going to learn about your son and the story? What, what, what's special? Uh, I think what's special is, is how much joy he's brought to our family, how much joy he's brought to my life, the things I've learned from Kennedy. Like what? Uh, well, just, you know... <clears throat> As an example, when I first started at ARC, I walked around and met all the adults with disabilities, and I would always typically walk away thinking, who's really disabled? You know, the mean type A aggressive business guy, all these people who are very generous and loving and kind and, and appreciative, and that's what Kennedy's teaching me. And, you know, his IQ may be 50s or 60s, but his EQ is like nearly 200. And just how he relates to people and how he appreciates people. Jump, jump on that one again, in that, um my son, when you talk about that, the emotional qu quotient, that, that he tracks, he knows when somebody is down, he, he, he reads a situation. Uh, when his older sister is hurt, he is there giving her a hug and a kiss, and he might not understand the dynamics, but something is just tied in on an emotional level. Um, For that, whatever reason, they yeah. tend to be very sensitive, very compassionate, very empathetic, and those are not traits that I was always blessed with. <laughs> and so th 
Both, <laughs> but not like you, of course. But like uh, you. but those are some of the things that he's teaching me, and those are some of the stories that I cover in the book. The um, the other part of it is, our, tell me if, if your son is the same way. Mine is a is a emotional toggle switch. All right. So in other words, he is happy most of the time. He is entertains himself. He is in a fantasy world. I want to be in his world. He is constantly driving cars over ramps and, and running from bad guys. And <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to put a you know coax cable in his brain and put it on a TV monitor to see what James Bond movie he is living in because <laughs> it, it, it's that great. Um, but when he has a bad time, it's over here and he is he gets he gets angry and shuts down. There's there is no middle. He, there's no. Oh, I can tell he's getting a little. No, he he'll he'll get upset. Kennedy does that from time to time, yeah. but mostly he'll, he's on the other side. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or he's yeah. watching his favorite movies, or listening to his favorite music, or hanging out with the family and having fun. And he can get stubborn. He can get angry. But it's not as often as certainly I did or do. We're lucky in this area to have um, people like. Um, like the C family and uh, Michelle C. Witten and uh, the great guys at Rocky Mountain Down Syndrome and Down the Springs. There's a great organization that works with Down Syndrome. I mean, it's it is a different world for people coming into this, uh, into what we're coming into. Um, There's a lot of resources, yeah. a lot of support, a lot of education. Michelle's Global Down Syndrome Foundation does amazing work. Rocky Mountain Down Syndrome Association does amazing work. And, you know, life has changed for people like our kids over the last 20, 30 years. And the medicine has changed. I mean, my, you know, uh, the lifespan for someone like our sons um, is, is huge. There's still, uh, it still scares the, the hell out of me to think about Alzheimer's and how most of all of them will get Alzheimer's at an earlier age. But that's There's mild, so early onset, mild, yeah. typically. Yeah, and so they rarely get challenges. cancer, by the way. They rarely yeah. get cancer. There's some, there's some real pluses that are yeah. being studied. Um, but they get drunk a lot. <laughs> well, maybe in your house. In my house. Maybe in your house they do. Not so much in my house. All right, minute left. What? Uh, uh, half a minute left. What? What is it? People should walk away with. I think people should walk away with. Our kids bring a lot to society. They bring a lot to the employment. Um, you know, places of employment bring a lot to the schools. They should be included. Why not them? Means why not include our kids in all aspects of society. And while you're at it, why not go to an ARC store, help them out, <laughs> and honestly, find great stuff. Half the clothes that Chance wears comes from one of those stores. So thank you for That's that. That's outstanding. Take care. Hey, check me out on uh, KHOW Radio. Read me in the Denver Post. Tell a friend, and we'll see you next week.